Now, elsewhere in the NFL, we have a couple news items. And if you have a, a Norma Hunt story, I know Miss Norma, she showed up at those games. And so she had all the energy in the world. So Chiefs fans, I'd love to hear from you um, at Up and Adam's show. But let's move on to a little Dalvin Cook here because I think you should stay in Minnesota. Okay, ESPN's reporting that Dalvin and his exit from the Vikings is likely, if not completely certain, and basically it's all a formalizing situation. Now, the exit, you know, could come in the form of a trade, but here's where I'm sitting. It'll be hard for Minnesota to get a ton because Delvin still has three years left on a chunky, hardy contract. So a release seems more likely because of the cap hit. Cook, let's not forget, is coming off of the one of the best years of his career, okay? A fourth straight Pro Bowl, He's going into his 28-year season, not quite at that dreaded 30-year-old mark for running back, so he's still under that mark. And, you know, yeah, I'll get into some landing spots in a minute. Miami, fine, sure. But the Viking side of things is interesting, and I don't see enough people talking about it right now. They might be in the most complicated but fascinating position of any NFL franchise right now. We don't care. We forget. We completely disregard that they're coming off a 13-4 and four season, probably because they were bounced in the first round of the playoffs. I get it, but they're in a completely wide-open division, lest you forget. And even as the reigning champs, they're not favored to win it. The Lions are the consistent favorite every time I've looked over at FanDuel Sportsbook, and you should if you want to check out this stuff and how the Lions are falling here. Uh, the Vikings have been playing musical chairs with the other three, okay? Two weeks ago, Minnesota had the longest odds, and now they're back up in second, which we like to see. And there's good reason for it, because they have so much talent on the roster. But I don't think I'm alone in sort of struggling to figure out what to do with this Vikings team. They are a conundrum. They are a total riddle right now. And there's a lot of questions, and it all starts with their quarterback, Kirk Cousins. He's entering a contract year, okay? They traded away their best defensive player from last season in Zadarius Smith, and now it sounds like Dalvin is all but formally gone. So to me, it seems like they're playing this halfway. I don't love it. Like, they're trying to rebuild on the fly while staying in contention. 13 and 4. This is a risky proposition here. And I get it. Justin Jefferson, he's going to want the bank, right? He's going to command a monster deal. And they have some cap issues. But this division is right for the taking right now. It could be yours. It's the NFC looking how it does right now. So I know the Eagles are strong and made some things and are doing some things. But outside of the Eagles, every other team in the conference has the same sort of question mark at least one or two, just hanging over their heads outside of Philadelphia. So, personally, if I'm really looking for a little Vikings fans this morning, like, I'd love to see Minnesota hang on to Dalvin and go all in one last ride with Kirk Cousins. You know, Kirko chains. Let's do it. And if it doesn't work, then you blow it up because I feel like the only teams these kind of half-measure rebuilds work for are the teams who already have young future franchise quarterbacks in place. So there's a nice little opportunity here with this conference being what it is. And I think it's fair for Vikings fans to question whether or not Kwesi and this front office are sort of positioning themselves to take full advantage of that this season. And I know time's going to tell and we can't really judge anything that they're doing right now. It's a long-term deal. But I don't know. This season, the fan base is going to look back wondering why didn't you push harder? I think that's the state of the NFC and the NFC North. And if they just move on from guys like a Dalvin, a difference maker coming off one of the best years of his career, it's a little tough to swallow with things being as wide open as they are. And if they do move on from him, we've got to talk landing destinations, right? Because there's interesting teams popping up. But there's, you know, we'd love to see Miami. Everyone. Everyone and their mom on Twitter today is like, to Miami, to Miami. And... Right, it's a cute storyline, of course. Former Mr. Florida football coming back where it all started. I get it, but he can make a huge impact with this Dolphin squad. Their run game was shot. It was 25th last year, and it's been an issue for a while. Over the last six years, the Dolphins, six years, guys, the Dolphins have had the second least productive run game in the league. Okay, they've scored the fewest touchdowns on the ground over that span as well. It's been a problemo. So while I know the Dolphins have built this, like, let's go, Tyreek Hill, high octane passing attack. McDaniel's so fun and zany and cool and waddles waddling in the thing. Let's not forget that the heart of this Kyle Shanahan influenced Mike McDaniel scheme 
is the run game. It's their bread and butter, and their passing game and the RPOs are all built off of that. So putting Dalvin in this offense might give two of the most dangerous collection of weapons in the entire league. And McDaniel made it very clear the Dolphins are going to make the most of their cap space. He spoke to the media last Wednesday before putting a, you know, the crafty move to work and completely changing the subject before he got any follow-ups. Take a listen to our guy, Mike. I'd feel confident to say that um, we'll make good use out of that salary cap room um, when it comes to the start of the regular season. Hmm? I can't believe you guys missed the op. This is, this is, the South Florida 2023 did not just begin with these um, playoff uh, really progressions of both the Heat and the Florida pa Panthers. No one wants to talk to me about Nova. Okay, yes, he really did start talking about Division II Nova Southeastern basketball team and avoided any further questions. And move, I fully respect. We see you. We love you. But uh, let's work with what he did give us for a second, right? Once June 1st hit, the Dolphins' cap space jumped up 13.9 million. And he didn't hold back in saying they're going to make use of that space, which, by the way, would be enough to absorb Dalvin Cook's contract if they wanted to make a trade or more than enough to sign him if he hits the market and they part ways with him. Uh, so it looks like Miami, it sounds like it, Nova aside, they're ready to be aggressive. And I have to wonder if a move for Dalvin switches these odds up a little bit. They have the third longest odds to win the AFC East on FanDuel Sportsbook. And without Dalvin, the Dolphins are getting slept on here, first of all, beyond. And, I, you know, I think if all breaks right and they stay healthy, they are going to contend for a Super Bowl this year in a loaded, crowded, crazy AFC. I think they've got the talent to do it. So... Getting Dalvin, holy smokes. Like, if they can have, like, a top 10 run game, woo! Tough, tough. I don't know if it changes those odds. I'd love to know what you guys think, though. Um, we, have a, a, we have a great running back on the show. Speaking of AFC East running backs, James White is on the show. He's a three-time... Oh, my gosh, sweet feet. You have three Super Bowl rings, so you got to get in that closet and pull them out for me. I need to see those sparklers. We've got former New England Patriots great James White on the show.